Welcome to our training session on responsible and sustainable purchasing practices. Thank you for taking the time to participate. This training will take 25 minutes to complete. This training session was jointly developed by the German Partnership for Sustainable Textiles and the Aldi South Group. The Partnership for Sustainable Textiles is an initiative founded in 2014 and aims to improve the social and environmental conditions within the global textile production industry. The partnership works to improve conditions along the entire supply chain, from cotton growing and harvesting through to the manufacturing and sewing of garments. By joining the partnership, your company has joined forces with partners from business, politics, civil society, trade unions and standards bodies in order to jointly bring about changes in the textile industry. With over 80 member companies, the Partnership for Sustainable Textiles represents almost 50% of the German market. In order for the Partnership for Sustainable Textiles to achieve its goals, brand and retail companies must also critically review their own business practices. This includes their business model, as well as their purchasing strategy and practices, as these significantly impact the conditions in production facilities. Research has shown that the working conditions in production facilities cannot be improved sustainably without change on the part of the purchasing companies. In this training session, we will address the consequences that certain purchasing practices have for workers in production facilities and what can be done in order to avoid these negative consequences. After this training session, you will know how the term purchasing practices is defined and who in your company may influence purchasing practices. You will be aware of the consequences that your own actions can have on the working conditions and wages for workers across the supply chain. And finally, you will know how responsible purchasing practices at your company can contribute to better working conditions across the supply chain. First of all, let's start with what the term purchasing practices actually means. The definition of purchasing practices is the strategic planning, procurement, product development, purchasing and the underlying behaviours, values, principles and internal processes that impact workers in the supply chain. The term purchasing practices therefore generally refers to the way in which purchasing companies or the ordering party interact with suppliers and production facilities, the contracting party. This applies to various areas ranging from strategic planning, procurement and product development to purchasing. Purchasing practices are therefore not only influenced by purchasing operations, as the name would suggest, but by multiple departments in your company. This is what we will now take a closer look at. Let's take the design department as a first example. If the design department wants to make any changes to a product shortly before the start of production, such as adding another zip or other details, processes in the production facility must be adapted accordingly. This leads to delays in the corresponding schedules, which are often tight to begin with, and adds time pressure in production to meet the agreed delivery date. Likewise, the Human Resources Department may influence purchasing practices. Human Resources is responsible for recruiting employees who have a good instinct for the potential consequences of their daily business activities and can make appropriate decisions. In addition, this department can also be responsible for the performance bonus and remuneration system, which sets certain incentives for buyers. Such incentives may motivate employees to always negotiate to the lowest possible prices. Other departments, such as quality assurance or accounting, may also impact purchasing practices. However, the departments that have an influence on purchasing practices depends on the individual business and its internal structures. In any case, this example shows that your purchasing practices can only be changed if all departments in your company work together. But how can your company's purchasing practices affect working conditions along your supply chain? Let's take a look at a fictitious example. 
you work in the buying department of Top Fashion GmbH, which purchases some of its products from a production facility called Garment Limited in Bangladesh. This production facility employs approximately 1,500 people. Let us imagine that your company, Top Fashion GmbH, has commissioned Garment Limited to produce a certain volume of ladies' blouses for the upcoming season. Based on the product specifications provided, the production facility produces an initial sample which is sent to your company for acceptance. Moreover, the management staff of the production facility uses these product specifications to determine the capacities required for the order and to prepare the production line and a production schedule. The design and quality assurance departments of your company review the sample and notice that the specifications contained an error. As a result, the cut of the blouse is not correct. The specifications are adjusted accordingly and sent to the production facility with the request to produce a second sample. The production facility produces a second sample and sends it to you again. At this point, the schedule has now been delayed as only one sample approval step was planned. The lead time for the production facility is cut short. As the new season is approaching, your company is very busy. To make things worse, some employees are on sick leave. Unfortunately, this means that the Design and Quality Assurance Department can only review the second sample and give the production facility the go-ahead at a very late stage. The entire schedule has now been delayed considerably. The production facility can no longer meet the requested delivery date with the planned capacities. The factory management therefore inquires if the deadline can be extended. As the blouse must be on sale in time for the new season, you cannot postpone the delivery day any further and insist on the original deadline. In order to avoid a contractual penalty for the delayed delivery or high air transport costs, the factory management must find alternative ways of meeting the deadline. Management therefore decides that all workers will need to work overtime for the next few weeks and reduces break and rest times. The workforce at Garment Limited now work 80 hours a week over several weeks. Days off and holidays are not granted at all. As the workers are exhausted and only allowed to take short breaks, the number of work-related injuries increases. Within just one week, the production facility management records five times as many incidents as usual. In addition, the workers do not receive the bonus payments prescribed by law for the overtime worked. These costs were not included in your order. At the same time, stress leads to increased pressure and harassment at the workplace. The supervisors demand that the workers increase production speed in order to meet the deadline. The atmosphere becomes increasingly aggressive and tense. In the end, these measures are still not enough to complete the order on time. The production facility management therefore outsources a part of the order to another factory. Your company is not informed about this. This means that you do not know where and under what working conditions some of your products are being manufactured. This example shows that if changes are made to product specifications and samples are not approved within good time, this can lead to extremely high overtime, high injury rates, harassment at the workplace and underpayment of overtime hours worked. Moreover, such purchasing practices increases the risk of unauthorised subcontracting. However, consequences caused by immense time pressure can also arise from other practices during the purchasing process. Let's have a look at another example. Garment Limited has received another order from your company. This time, Top Fashion GmbH only places a small order as it is not yet clear how well the product will sell. For your company, this reduces the risk of excess stock that may have to be sold at reduced prices at a later date. However, it quickly becomes evident that the product is selling better than expected. You place a second larger order as soon as possible in order to meet customer demand. During negotiations, you want to achieve a short delivery date. As your company is an important client for Garment Limited, the production facility agrees to deliver the merchandise in the short lead time. 
as there was no way for Garment Limited to foresee if and when you would place your next order, the factory management has already allocated all capacities to other orders. Therefore, in order to fulfil your order, capacities must be increased over the next few weeks. This short-term order placement or increase in capacities puts the production facility under time pressure as Garment Limited now has less time for planning and preparing the production process. As in the first example, the time pressure caused by the short lead time can result in compulsory overtime, harassment at the workplace, underpayment and increased injury rates. It may also once again lead to Garment Limited being forced to hand over the order to another production facility. Let's move on to our third and final example, which shows the consequences of price pressure in the industry on the wages of workers along the supply chain. In all negotiations with Garment Limited, you were required to achieve the lowest possible prices. As already mentioned, your company is an important client for Garment Limited who would like to receive further orders from Top Fashion GmbH. Because of this, you have achieved your desired prices in all negotiations so far. The management of Garment Limited, on the other hand, have had to accept prices which barely cover the production costs or not at all. Accordingly, the production facility management is now required to keep all variable operational and procurement related costs as low as possible. So what are the potential short to long term consequences of this? At Garment Limited, the factory management decides to save on investments and repairs. Broken and defective protective equipment is not being replaced for the time being. The flushing system and the light in the ladies' restroom, which has already been faulty for months, now has the repair delayed further. At the same time, the production facility management is firmly opposed to the growing demands from the workers for wage increases as they see no financial leeway to negotiate even a small increase. The workers are frustrated as the low wages in Bangladesh are not sufficient to secure their livelihood. The management of Garment Limited passes on the cost pressure downstream to their supply chain elements. During negotiations with their fabric supplier, Garment Limited demands challenging prices. This pressure continues for all downstream supply chain elements. The fabric supplier also accepts the order at an uncompetitive price and passes the cost pressure further on down the supply chain, right down to the cotton cultivation stage. This example shows that cost pressure in price negotiations results in cost and price pressure along the entire supply chain. In textile production facilities, Necessary investments in protective equipment, hygiene facilities or building security are often neglected. Workers' wages at production facilities also stagnate as there is no financial leeway for wage increases. What are the actual consequences for the workers of Garment Limited? How much do they earn? In Bangladesh, according to the current legal minimum wage, a tailor earns about 80 euros a month. With this money, workers pay their rent, buy food and medicine for their family, as well as school books for their children, pay for transport to and from work, buy clothing for themselves and their family, and usually also support their own parents. Some money must also be put aside in case of emergencies. In Bangladesh, a family income is usually based on one and a half salaries. This means that one parent earns a full salary and the other earns half a salary. According to internationally recognised scientific calculations, in order to cover all monthly expenses for a family of four and still have some money left over for unexpected expenses, a worker would have to earn €160 Euros per month. This is more than twice the current minimum wage. This example illustrates that, while many production countries of the textile and clothing industry have set statutory minimum wages, these are often too low to cover the cost of living. This gap between wages and the cost of living is not just common to Asia, but to many production countries in Europe as well. In Bulgaria, the legal minimum wage for a worker is 242 euros per month. 
However, in order to adequately cover all regular expenses, a worker would actually have to earn €633 Euros per month, provided that both parents of a family have an income. Once again, the wages in Bulgaria would need to be twice as high in order to cover the living expenses. Because of this gap, the term living wage has become well established over the last few decades. Living wage reflects the income that workers need to meet the basic needs of themselves and their families, including some discretionary income. This income should be earned during the statutory working hours. This means without overtime. The fact that this is generally not the case in the textile industry is, amongst other factors, due to cost pressure in the industry and during price negotiations. Governments and minimum wage committees fear that foreign companies will switch to other production countries if the minimum wage is increased. At this point, let us briefly summarise what we have learned from our examples. In principle, certain purchasing practices can have a negative impact on workers along the supply chain. These include high cost pressure during price negotiations, excessively short lead times for production, inaccurate planning or inadequate production forecasts, short term changes to product specifications or poorly coordinated and delayed communication with production facilities. These practices will have a knock on effect to the supplier, such as unforeseen costs due to poor planning, delays in delivery dates and quality defects. For workers, these practices will often result in high amounts of overtime, low wages, few breaks and rest periods, a high risk of injury, unrealistic performance targets and harassment in the workplace. The potential side effects have consequences for all parties involved and can lead to a variety of dangerous practices, including unauthorised subcontracting and forced labour. On the other hand, responsible purchasing practices can not only have a positive impact on conditions in production facilities along the supply chain, but also harbour opportunities for your business. Good purchasing practices can make it easier for your company to find good and reliable business partners and promote trust-based cooperation. So what can your company do to improve its purchasing practices as well as the working conditions in production facilities that you use? The potential for improvement can be found throughout the entire purchasing process, from the purchasing strategy and strategic planning to product design and development, sampling, price negotiation, order placement, production and delivery. Let's start with the purchasing strategy. What principles contribute to better working conditions in production facilities in this area? Potential measures include considering sustainability related aspects in purchasing and the corresponding strategic goals. Creating internal initiatives for responsible purchasing practices for example, through performance evaluations and bonus systems for buyers. Consolidating your supply chain more and thereby focusing on a small number of strategic and long-term partnerships. Long-term partnerships also contribute to trust-based relationships with suppliers and enable you to work together on improvements. Following a sustainable approach when selecting new suppliers, Asking that any new suppliers are audited and evaluated in regards to the social and environmental standards in their production facilities before commencing the business relationship. You should treat suppliers with respect and fairness. In this context, fair means a negotiation that enables production facilities to cover their production costs. A clear policy for subcontracting should also be in place, as your company has even less control where the subcontractors adhere to labour standards in their production facilities. And finally, create a responsible exit strategy for terminating business relationships. This should give your suppliers sufficient time to find new clients and prevent negative consequences for workers on site. Which aspects of strategic planning and forecasting can contribute to better purchasing practices? First of all, the buying department should communicate the required quantities to the supplier as early as possible in order to facilitate planning. In addition, long-term contracts offer suppliers more reliability and planning security. 
They enable production facilities to realistically plan working times and capacities and thus prevent overtime, subcontracting and hazardous employment relationships. Timelines and responsibilities from the start of the purchasing process until the delivery of the product should be jointly decided in advance, as they are key to enable production facilities to produce your merchandise within the regular working hours. This requires an ongoing and open exchange of information between your company and your suppliers when developing and updating timelines and responsibilities. Your company should avoid deviations from forecasts wherever possible. If changes are absolutely necessary, they should only be made in consultation with the supplier. In addition, the order volume should be spread equally over the year. For example, core range products should be produced during the low season in order to take workload off the high season. Let's move on to product design and development. It is important to communicate clear and unambiguous product specifications. Employees of the design and development departments should be familiar with the production processes so that they can anticipate the impact that changes to product specifications may have on production. Additionally, your company's design specifications should take into account the production capacity of the production facility. This means the extent to which certain requirements can be implemented at all. Consequently, your employees responsible for sampling or sample acceptance and order placement should ensure that samples are approved as quickly as possible, if necessary, by means of digital sampling. Now let us have a look at the price negotiation and order placement. The most important requirement in this area is to develop price models, such as the open costing model, which takes fair working conditions and higher wages into account. Please also ensure that your pricing model accounts for any cost developments, for example, the increase of raw material costs or wage increases. Furthermore, any possible penalties for quality defects or delayed delivery should be clearly stated in contracts with suppliers. Payment terms should be fair and not cause a supplier financial difficulties. Payment by letter of credit can be a means of fair settlement. Last but not least, let us talk about the production and delivery. When placing contracts, you and the supplier should agree on deadlines that enable a realistic production period. During ongoing production, your company should not request any further changes to the product unless the delivery times can be adjusted accordingly and any costs arising from such an adjustment are reimbursed. Many of these potential measures are interrelated and require interdepartmental coordination. Their implementation in practice is not always easy. However, your company is not alone with these challenges. Many companies ranging from major players such as H&M and Chibo to smaller companies such as Autovox have made a public commitment to improve their purchasing practices. In the Partnership for Sustainable Textiles, we are working on joint solutions with companies across the globe. To summarise, what should you have learned during this training session? The purchasing practices of your company can have a negative impact on workers in the supply chain. These negative impacts can range from occupational health and safety to working hours and the payment of workers in production facilities. In particular, cost pressure in price negotiations may mean that production costs and wage costs cannot be fully covered. Potential areas for improvement can be found in all steps of the purchasing process. In order to achieve changes in your company and establish better purchasing practices, all workers and departments with roles in the purchasing process should be involved. Ultimately, everyone must work together. We have now reached the end of this training session and would like to encourage you to adopt these improvements. This training session was a first step. Please use your position within your company to proactively advocate change. Your colleagues from the sustainability department will be glad to support and inform you about concrete measures your company can take 
and discuss options for action in your field of responsibility. In your everyday work, you can help improve the working conditions of millions of workers in production facilities around the world and help shape responsible supply chains.